Howdy all, back down here in the garage with a uh, recent purchase here within the last week or so. This is the beginnings of a small gas engine. Uh, bought this locally uh, off a guy that bought it from another guy. Um, and this was a wild vision of some old guy, and I don't know if it ever did run or not, but let's uh, go over here and we'll start looking around and see what all this guy, how his vision was. Now, this is basically just a, a gas engine, but this cylinder would have been off a horizontal engine and he put it on its side, I mean, would have been off a vertical engine, upright, and he laid everything down on its side to be a horizontal engine and made a lot of stuff. I don't really know what the cylinder is at this point. Um, you can kind of see though, it would have been upright. This would have been your primer cup for gasoline. Um, it's all filled up with, uh, mud wasps and spider nest and stuff, but this is one pretty crazy idea. The base is made out of a six by six that partially rotted away and uh, five sixteenths steel plates. Um, you can see he had the plates cut so the flange of the cylinder went down in there. I mean, it's not super tight where but it's going to do the job, I think. And he had these little rods, these side rods. You can see he put down, made a hook on them so they don't come out. But they had, uh, he had two of them going down and then bolting into the flange bolts or the flange holes to kind of, kind of keep it solid. And, uh, he has this bracket on the front that uh, is, I mean, it's pretty solid onto the steel plates. It, it should keep the cylinder good, but I don't know if the guy was done with this project or not, but there's nothing holding it down to the wood on the front side here. This thing, it, it needs something, some brackets to go back on the wood there. Um, it has a Model T Ford carburetor on it, Model F, and this, this manifold system was, was all fabricated out of stuff he had from something else, obviously. Um, you can kind of see he had cut it and brazed it, offset a little bit so he could have the clearance. I mean, it's not quite right, but it might work. And he... Uh, put these braised these brackets on here with this little angle so he could use this clamping system in onto your runners and he welded them together with a plate so they're they don't move separately they would be one piece um everything right now on it i mean it's not locked up the the only thing that's locked up right now is this uh exhaust valve um, the intake valve works. Uh, he had some sort of a, uh, oh, it's just like a, a pipe adapter to take up the space to put pressure on this return spring to, to uh, open the or close the uh, intake valve. And he, uh, he made this push rod. It's going to be hard to get down in here and see, but um, this... Uh, slider bracket here so everything stays straight and there's a there's a roller on the end of that that works on the, the cam lobe which it it's free to it spins the he made the connecting rod um, you can see there's two different styles there now I don't know whether he was drilling different holes to get the length correct 
and pinned it, and then, but it's brazed up here on the top and bottom. So I don't know what the crank and the flywheels are off of. Um, it's, apparently it's probably not from the same engine. I thought maybe, maybe something happened catastrophic and the engine blew up and the, the bottom half of the base was broke, but even if it did, unless the crank and unless the rod got damaged, but according to the flywheels, it, it looks like it might be roughly around a three horse, but I, I can't verify that for sure. Uh, got about a four inch bore. The uh, back of the base, he has these, I don't even know what exactly he did to make these saddles to hold the crankshaft. Um, they're, they're solid steel, but they, they go down on these steel plates. And it looks like there's just set screws into there. Uh, I couldn't tell if they went clear through, if they were threaded or not. It doesn't look like it, but uh, I mean, guess theoretically it, it would probably work. Um, the main caps, whatever, whatever they came off of, are a little bit, a little bit shaky. They got some piece parts that are where the threads are to uh, put the oilers in there. They're kind of busted. I don't know if there's enough there to clean them up or not. But um, the the crankshaft and the flywheels almost look like they were off of something original. Um, it looks like this would have been a, a sprocket for a chain drive of some some sort. Um, he does have a wood block here and a bolt that goes down clear clear down to the, through to the bottom here to hold the back side down. I mean, it's, it's not completely tight either, but I, uh, I'm going to do something. I'd like to get it running just like it is to see if his vision was, uh, was a working vision or if it is, wasn't. Um, I'm probably going to at least put some type of strap, even just a tar uh, ratchet strap around here because uh, I don't know anybody that's dealt with engines like these when they fire they jump and bounce so this being completely loose on the front probably wouldn't be a very good situation but um, it had had a spark plug in it and a wire hooked on to it um, and it looks it obviously it was it was set up to run off of a buzz coil um, you can see he has this this bracket in here um, connected to the ground and little little nuts to to get your wires on there and uh, when this is in rotation correctly this would be going counterclockwise when the, when this pin would come up and hit this tab that would connect your ground and that would cause the buzz coil to to uh, pass juice to the spark plug so uh, theoretically everything should work the way he has it um, but I'd really like to get it going just to see if it's even going to fire um, and then and then uh, get a little bit more into it um, I'm not exactly sure on what he has here for a connecting rod bearing. It has this, it has right in front of the oiler there, you can see this, this uh, pin and it goes down. It's like a tapered pin. It's like a, like there may be a, um, a sliding bushing in there that as it wears that tapered pin comes down and keeps tension on uh, I, I just gotta I gotta get it apart a little bit further and see exactly what his vision was um, but uh, man it is pretty pretty crazy little design um, I there's a hole here that has threads in it um, for an oiler I just will have to be careful how far I 
put anything down in there because the piston comes back past that like I mean it's right there I may I may have to tack a little uh, oh a little a, a, a steel bushing or braze of brass bushing collar on there to give it some extra extra height for an oiler and he had this uh, he had this strap that he made to go around there and uh, it's bolted down here to hold the back half of the cylinder down in these steel plates. So it's a uh, pretty crazy little engine. I'm really excited to uh, get things going on it here and see if it'll even run. Um, maybe an issue I'm going to have to do some searching on parts for a these old uh, Model A carburetors, but I got to get uh, I got to get the exhaust valve freed up first so I can spin it over and and uh, get everything freed up and lubed up so it it uh, spins freely. But um, it's a it's a cool little project. I'm I'm going to keep going on it here little bits at a time and uh, do some more videos on it of how how things are going. So um, if this kind of little Frankenstein projects get you going hit that subscribe like and share and uh, we're gonna keep going on it and try to get a little bit of fire out of it so thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch y'all later